Good day YouTube, welcome to my channel. My name is Stefan, AKA Hippo. Today I'm gonna to talk about three After Effects plugins that every motion graphics artist should have installed and why. If you're just starting out or making Facebook ads or any promos that involve motion graphics, or if you need fast turnaround times, then these plugins are gonna help you a lot. Okay, cool. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head to aescripts.com. Um, if you don't know anything about aescripts, it's an awesome site. It's got a bunch of different plugins across um, a whole heap of programs here, After Effects, Premiere Pro, Cinema 4D. Um, and the cool thing about aescripts is that it's got a name your own price model for uh, a lot of these plugins. Um, now, obviously, support these creators if you can, but... Um, if you're a student or you're a bit strapped for cash, then that option is there to get some of these plugins for free. Word of warning, there's a lot of sexy looking plugins on this site. It's a bit of a rabbit hole. Just don't get bamboozled. That's my word of warning. Some of these plugins that might be a bit overcomplicated for what you need. Just download these three plugins, okay? And then um, you'll be okay. <laughs> okay, so the first uh, plugin we're gonna talk about is Reposition Anchor Point. Just type in Reposition in that search bar there and it should be the first result. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, God damn, that sounds, that sounds boring. Why would I wanna reposition the anchor point? The anchor point, if you don't know what the anchor point is, it basically determines um, the origin point of all of your transform properties, or at least scale, uh, position, and rotation. And what this plugin does is makes it super easy using this little interface that they have here to move that anchor point to certain positions uh, accurately. So top, top left, middle, bottom. Um, and I'll show you why that matters. Um, so what you're gonna need to do is add that to cart. And like I said, there's, an, uh, there's a name your own price. So you can pay whatever you want, 299 or, or zero. Um, add that to your cart. So go ahead and download that bad boy. You will download a zip file, um, which when you then extract, you'll be presented with a readme and a .jsx file um, called reposition anchor point. So all you need to do, depending on your OS, is to drag that .jsx file into the script UI panels folder. So on Mac OS, it's in your uh, applications folder under Adobe After Effects, under scripts, the script UI panels folder is in there. I'm in Windows, program files, Adobe After Effects uh, support files, scripts, and the script UI panels folder is in there. So I'm on Windows here, program files, Adobe, Adobe After Effects 2022, latest and greatest, uh, under support files, and then down to um, scripts and script UI panels. And you can see that I've got my reposition anchor point um, right in there. Okay, so once you have that in your script UI panels folder, you then come into After Effects. And if you go to window up here, and you'll see down the bottom here that reposition anchor point is now there. And if you click that, it'll pop up as a little window and you can drag it around and position it wherever you want. This is what my window setup looks like at the moment. Um, that's why I like it to be. Obviously, if you're on a smaller laptop, it might not work, but um, I like it spread out a bit. So what does this plugin do? Uh, basically, it makes it super simple to reposition your anchor point accurately and also repositioning it without actually moving your layer. Let me show you. Okay, so normally there are two ways to uh, move your anchor point around. Uh, the first way is you press Y on the keyboard or if you come up here to the pan behind tool, um, you can then click and drag and move that wherever you want. As you can see, it's not moving the layer, which is good. I mean, I can move this down here. And as you can see, if I then go ahead and rotate that, it's rotating from that point. So like I said before, the anchor point is the origin point for your transform property. So for scale, rotation, and position, that's where that item will now move from. Now here's the problem with that, right? If I want that exactly in the middle, I can't be sure if that's exactly in the middle. Why would I want it exactly in the middle? Well, if you're animating like a wheel or if you want a precise animation, if it's slightly off, it'll be it'll look wonky. So you'd be moving this around and you'd be putting it somewhere and you. I mean, you sometimes might not put it exactly where it's meant to be. It's not 100% accurate. Um, it's just slightly off and that'll lead to, you know, slightly wonky animations. Or if you're animating a wheel, it'll be wobbly. Or um, if you want that accuracy, then that's not the best way to do it. Um, now, the next way to do it is to just press on your layer and just hit the A key and that'll bring up your anchor point down here. Now, watch what happens. I'm moving my anchor point and I could be mathematically correct if I want to, but it's actually moving the whole layer. That's no good. If you've created a composition, let's say in uh, Photoshop and you've brought it in, 
I, I've got it all set up. I don't want to move my shit around with the anchor point. I want it to be in place and I want to be able to change the anchor point without actually changing the original look of it. So that's where reposition anchor point comes into play. It allows me to make these super accurate um, key anchor point changes. So if I want it in the middle, it's going exactly in the middle. Top right, top right, top middle, top middle, bottom, bottom. You get the picture. These are going to be accurate, precise, and they won't move your layer around. It really just becomes part of that workflow, makes that workflow quicker, and lets you make these immediate changes on the fly. Um, just a quick example as well. If I'm doing a basic animation here, let's just scale. Let's do a starting keyframe and then go to one second and scale it in from zero um, to 100. That's actually scaling from the left. If I don't like that, then I can immediately just go to the animation here, change it back to the middle. Boom, that's affected it immediately right there. And I can do that on the fly. I don't need to reset or do it again or reanimate it. So that's reposition anchor point, guys. As you can see, I've got it here for quick access, super handy. Once you download it and, and start using it, it'll just be one of those tools that you cannot put down or cannot do a project um, without. Okay, so the next plugin we're gonna talk about is Text Evo 2. Um, basically, what this plugin allows you to do is pull pretty pro looking text animations out of your ass in a very short amount of time. <laughs> and it's given me great results every time. Super cool, super flexible, obviously not as good as the third plugin, you just wait. But basically if you need to animate text quickly and make it look pro, then you need this plugin. So same as before, you'll be presented with a uh, zip file and in that zip file, you'll get a .jsx file called TextEvo2. And you're gonna wanna put that in your uh, script UI panels folder as I explained before. Then once you're in After Effects, again, it's up here under Window and down here, Text Evo 2, popped it up here. It's out of the way and it's quickly accessed. So how does it work? Select your text layer and um, add Text Evo to that layer. So you just click this little plus button, make sure your layer is selected obviously. And as you can see, Text Evo is applied up here and it's made a couple of strength keyframes there for you. That's basically your in animation. So that's your text coming in. But look, nothing's happening so far. So you can just start adding your own transform properties to that. So come up here. This is where you'll live most of the time under transform. What this transform dropdown is doing is determining where your animation is starting from. So let's start my animation um, over to the left here. Let's have a quick look at that. All right, so that's animating in by letter. Okay, so by letter, if you look up here, you can actually change that to letters, words, or lines. Again, you can come up here to this little button and make sure your um, Make sure your text layer is selected and you can change that to letters, words, or lines. So let's go lines and just see what that looks like. So each line is animating in like that. But what's missing? Let's go opacity. So if I change my opacity, again, this determines the starting point. So changing my opacity to zero, it's gonna start from a zero and then it's gonna animate in. And look at that. How long did that take us? 10 seconds to do that. Now, obviously, you can play around with this. There's endless possibilities. Let's go scale. Let's make it start from a zero scale. Let's look what that looks like. Okay. Let's add some rotation in there. Let's make it start from like a minus 19. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now let's go up here again and change it based on letters. Okay, that's a little bit more dynamic. But yeah, within seconds, you've got cool looking animations on your text. Um, now, I know what some of you might be thinking. You're like, oh, Hippo, why can't I just go and chuck a um, slow fade on on my layer? You can use slow fade on if you want. You'll then go sit in the corner and think about your life and why you're not using Text Evo 2. No, if you're in a high pressure situation and you just need stuff to look good, then this is a super easy way to do it. So the third and final plugin I'm gonna talk about is Ease and Wiz. When I discovered this plugin um, at one of my motion graphics jobs about eight years ago, it was a game changer, right? All I was ever used to was just easy easing my keyframes. I wasn't much of a graph editor guy on After Effects. There's a scary little window to click on the graph editor. <laughs> um, but this came along and just blew my socks off. Honestly, the best plugin I've ever used. Um, let's go ahead and install it. Okay, so slightly different folder setup. Once you've downloaded it, you can see there's a couple more things. There's a folder, easing expressions, and a JSX file. So you're gonna to need to take that JSX file 
and the easing expressions folder and pop it in your script UI panels folder as I showed before. Then you come back to After Effects and again, there it is in your window. You might need to restart After Effects and ease and whiz. Um, so it pops up over here. So what this allows you to do, right, is to ease your keyframe. So if you look at, just to explain this for a second, if you look at um, the graph editor, that's the curve that your animation has looked at, that your rotation animation looks like, right? And there's a bunch of different easing curves. That's just an easy ease that I've chucked on there. Um, see you there by using F9 or right clicking keyframe assistant easy ease, but there's a bunch of different types of eases. Basically your linear, which is your A to B with no easing applied, right? In and out. So sine just gives it that little bump and smooths it out, right? Then quad cubic quart quint, the further you go down, the faster that initial movement is, but the longer it takes to get to that out point. Okay, so let's take a look what that actually looks like. Um, I don't know about you, but when I first started with After Effects, finding my easing options was like a game changer, right? It smooths everything out and makes it look pro. So this just takes that to the next level. It just gives you more options above and beyond your standard easy ease. Okay, so let's take a look at this. That's just a ball coming into screen with easy ease. Okay, so, so it's sitting here basically like sign, right? That's your easy ease essentially. So let's let's move it down to Expo, which if you look at this graph, you see how it's just that faster initial attack, but then a longer time to get out to its out point. So let's see what that looks like. Let's select that last keyframe, Compute Ease and Wiz, and let's pick Expo. So sign, that's more like your easy, easy ease, and then the further you go, it gives that quicker attack and longer tail. So let's put Expo on there, type out, apply. So look at that. So that's a fast initial intro, fast in, and then that's slow out, fast in, slow out. So let's go back. That's your easy ease. And then let's go to that expo again. It's just that fast attack, fast attack, slow end. Okay, now let's take that to the next level, right? So one of the harder things in After Effects for a beginner or even for someone who's, who's used After Effects for a while is to make a ball bounce, to make it look realistic. You can go in there and animate it manually or you can use the graph editor and get really good results. But what Ease and Wiz lets you do is click one button. <laughs> so we've got that animation right now. It's just got Expo, which is that quick release and then a slow out, slow tail. Let's try... Let's try bounce. One button, and let's see if this looks realistic. That's pretty damn good. That's pretty damn realistic. Chuck some motion blur on that. That's a bouncing ball. Just move that keyframe out, and I'm pretty sure that'll give you just a, a slower bounce. Look at that. So let's not stop there. Let's quickly look at this little bit of text that we did before where we used um, text Evo 2 and reposition anchor point to get this result, right? So why don't we take this rotation that we animated in here. Let's let's spice it up a bit. So let's go to Ease and Wiz, select that last keyframe and go Elastic and Apply. Okay, so let's take a look. Pretty cool, hey? So it just adds that natural looking wobble on there. And you can imagine if you're doing dynamic text or just a text-based motion graphic, you can really start seeing why these plugins are just like the ultimate combo, right? This was never really about any one of these plugins. It was always about all three of these. And I find that using these three together is what's gotten me through so many sticky situations. It's what's given me opportunity to see the quality of my work uh, quickly. The thing with motion graphics and the thing with After Effects that I've found is that so quickly I can just lose hope. And I can lose faith in what I'm doing. If you're looking for that little bit of creativity or you're trying an idea and you don't want to go too far down because you'll get layers and layers and layers, this just allows you to keep moving forward and just to keep that little creative fire alive. That's it for this video. If you liked what you saw, please hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So any questions, uh, suggestions for tutorials or anything you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. And shameless plug, if you like my Roller Coaster Tycoon T, just hit the link in my description. Basically, I'll be covering motion graphics, After Effects, Mocha for After Effects, Premiere Pro, a little bit of rotoscoping, some matte painting, motion tracking, um, a bunch of stuff. I've got plenty to share, so come along for the ride. Thanks.